Good morning, ASEAN. Fresh up your world, your thought, and your idea with us every Monday to Friday from 7.30 to 8 a.m. I'm Nira Shah Malisa Lumia. And the Wina Jung Brasid is Friday, the 11th of October. Let's first start with the wrap-up of the ASEAN Summit in Brunei as the ASEAN uh, looks forward to building a strong foundation of cooperation with its plus three partners, that's namely China, Japan, and South Korea, by implementing our revised cooperation plan for the next five years. Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong made this point at ASEAN Plus 3 meeting, sub, summit meeting in Brunei on Thursday. Lee suggested strengthening cooperation in five areas. In the area of finance, he noted that ASEAN Plus 3 macroeconomic research office in Singapore is progressing well. Lee is encouraging the institution to deepen its linkages with international financial institutions like the International Monetary Fund or the IMF. He said this can be done by strengthening collaboration with the IMF in surveillance, capacity development and crafting and enforcement frameworks. Lee stressed that should a financial crisis hit, combining regional sources with that of the IMFs will restore market confidence sooner. The next area is food security. Lee said the speedy distribution of emergency rice reserves to the Philippines and Laos after recent natural disasters reflected the value and success of the partnership with the plus three partners. Next is education, and Lee welcomed progress on the plan of action on education being implemented by ASEAN and its three partners. As for tourism, he said the Memorandum of Cooperation in ASEAN Plus 3 Tourism Cooperation will strengthen people-to-people -people ties and bring about a better appreciation of rich cultures and heritage of the others. And the 23rd Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN Summit and related meetings, came to a close. A ceremony yesterday evening in Brunei and the 2014 summit will take place in Myanmar next year. In a symbolic handover ceremony, Brunei Sultan Hassanal Bolkiah gave chairmanship of next year's ASEAN meeting to Myanmar's President Tiansen. President Tiansen addressed to the um, leaders saying that it is extremely crucial for Myanmar to show unity and fulfilling of its common objectives, peace and fundamental ideas that Myanmar has formulated the theme of the 2014 chairmanship as moving forward in unity towards a peaceful and prosperous community. During a news conference after the closing ceremony, Bolkia avoided take, talking directly about the South China Sea dispute, saying only he wants to enhance maritime security. He said that ASEAN will continue to work on practical measures such as establishing hotlines of communication, including search and rescue of persons and vessels in distress. It is hoped that such measures will help to promote greater understanding and avoid instances at sea. And as the next chairmanship of the ASEAN summit will be Myanmar, there are some people who question that whether this is premature. Find out more in this special report. Just a few years ago, Myanmar was an isolated dictatorship that embarrassed the Association of Southeast Asian Nations with its dismal human rights record. Now it's poised to take over leadership of the 10-nation bloc for the first time. A move critics say may be premature given conflicts at home that have left hundreds dead and hundreds of thousands more displaced. The appointment of Myanmar to ASEAN chairmanship is meant to reward the former Paras transformation since its military junta turned over power to an elected government two years ago, and some are hopeful that putting the spotlight on Myanmar will serve as further incentive for reform. But Myanmar still has a long way to go. Matthew Smith, a Myanmar expert who directs the advocacy group Fortify Rights, said, from a human rights perspective, the chairmanship is an honor the government hasn't earned. He said more than 250,000 people have been forcibly displaced from their homes in the last two years. Wartime abuses continue, and there is an ongoing campaign of ethnic cleansing of Muslim communities, creating a regional refugee crisis. None of that spells regional leadership. Myanmar will be officially appointed head of ASEAN, which aims to promote regional economic development and cooperation in a handover ceremony in Brunei on Thursday, but it will not take up its duties until January the 1st. 
From time to time, ASEAN had criticized Myanmar, seeing its former heavy-handed military regime as a roadblock to regional progress. But in 1997, when the country formerly known as Burma won admission to ASEAN despite strong opposition from Western nations, the regional bloc cited its intention to encourage positive change. Myanmar changed little, however, until 2011, when the long-ruling military junta ceded power to a quasi-civilian government led by retired army officers. Few expected a transformation, but President Ting Sing's government surprised the world with a wave of reforms that have liberalized economic and politics. Aung San Suu Kyi, the longtime opposition leader who spent most of the last two decades as a prisoner in her own home, is now an elected lawmaker. Hundreds of political prisoners have been freed, a draconian system of media censorship has been abolished, and the government has signed ceasefire deals with most rebel groups. Asin's sentiment, meanwhile, remains largely the same. It says it is trying to encourage more reforms. Philippine presidential spokesman said in Brunei that they acknowledge the issues remain and they believe that Myanmar is working on them to their best ability. But the dramatic changes that have taken place in the country and the reforms that have been undertaken by the president of Myanmar also need to be recognized. ASEAN has generally maintained a policy of non-interference in members' internal matters, but the Philippines' presidential spokesman said leaders are expected to quietly push Myanmar on the sidelines to take more concrete steps to resolve the violence. Speaking to a young woman from Myanmar at an ASEAN Young Leaders meeting, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said, What is happening in Myanmar is exciting, but incomplete. They have to see the political transformation continue, and their hope is that democracy will continue to evolve. Tin Wu, a senior leader of Suu Kyi's opposition National League for Democracy Party, agreed, saying Myanmar has gradually changed. It is time they become chairman of ASEAN, even though they have difficulties. But Yan Miao, a Yangon-based political analyst, said that since Myanmar's leaders cannot yet solve their own domestic problems, it is questionable how they can take the regional leadership role. An international relations specialist at Bangkok's Dulalongkorn University said Myanmar has responded to international concerns so far in at least making the right gestures over human rights, such as freeing political prisoners before Teng Seng makes high-profile visits abroad. But now that the ASEAN leadership has fallen into their laps, they may think they don't have to do more. Thai Prime Minister Ying Lakshin Wat has invited Japan to take part in Thailand's two trillion transportation development project. She also proposed to Myanmar to jointly develop a trilateral highway creating land bridges between India, Myanmar and Thailand. She discussed these issues during bilateral talks with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and Myanmar President Thin Sein on the sidelines of the 23rd ASEAN summit in Brunei. Prime Minister Office spokesman T. Rat Ratanasewi said yesterday. She briefed Abe on the progress of the mega infrastructure project. She also asked his government and Japan's private sector to join the project. T. Rat said Abe was interested in having state agencies and the private sector become involved. Japan is not only keen to help roll out the high-speed train network, but also to provide consulting services on train operations and ticketing systems. Abe expressed uh, sym sympathy over the flood situation in Thailand and asked Yingluck government to take special care of Japanese factories. Ying Lak told Tin Sein that Thailand was ready to help Myanmar in achieving its reform agenda and to collaborate in trade and development of the Wei Special Economic Zone. The two leaders discussed the problem of smuggling across their borders, which caused the country's in lost tax collections. Thailand was also eager to work with Myanmar on the implementation of the national single window an electronic system ensuring secured and efficient electronic exchange of trade-related documents through a single point of entry. And U.S. officials say that the United States signed a civilian nuclear pact with Vietnam under which Hanoi committed not to produce ingredients for atomic weapons. 
U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Nguyen Tran Dong announced a deal known as the 1-2-3 Agreement on the sidelines of the East Asia Summit in Brunei. Kerry said that the agreement, which could potentially lead to future sales of U.S. nuclear reactors in Vietnam, will create numerous opportunities for the U.S. businesses between the two countries. He added that Vietnam's market for nuclear power, which is already the second largest in East Asia after China, is expected to grow 50 billion US dollars by 2030. And According to a senior U.S. administration official under the agreement, Vietnam has pledged not to acquire sensitive nuclear technologies, equipment and processing. Once the deal has been approved by the U.S. President Barack Obama, it will be subject to a 90-day review by the U.S. Congress. If there is no action by lawmakers, the bill will go into force. Vietnam faces energy shortages and is pursuing nuclear energy. It has plans for the first nuclear power plant to be in commercial operations in and by 2020. The country wants nuclear energy to provide more than 10 percent of its total power generation needs by 2030. And the communist rule nations already has a nuclear cooperation agreement with Russia. Despite Hanoi's determination to pursue nuclear power, there has been domestic opposition with many voicing fears that the locations selected for the plants make them vulnerable to earthquakes or tsunami. Filipino government's uh, senior government officials said they understood uh, the sudden decision of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry to cancel his trip to Manila this week due to a major typhoon that's about to hit the country. Well, he added that the Philippines is looking forward to his visit at a future date, and Deputy Pre Presidential Spokesperson Abigail Valte said that the Philippine Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario and Kerry announced the cancellation of the latter's visit to Manila on October 11 to the 12 at a joint press conference in Brunei on the sidelines of the ASEAN summit. She said that two officials announced that Kerry's trip to the country will be rescheduled in time before the end of the year. Kerry's trip to Manila was supposed to be a substitution for U.S. President Barack Obama, who canceled his Asian trip due to the American government shutdown for failure to pass its budget on time. Manila was supposed to be the last leg of Kerry's trip to four Southeast Asian countries, including Indonesia, Brunei, Malaysia, and the Philippines. And coming next after the break, going to have a look at the Thai-China economic deals after the break. Welcome back to the program. A number of agreements to strengthen the Shino Thai economic ties with the sign, I'm sorry, will be signed when Chinese Premier Li Keqiang arrived in Bangkok today. Li began his three-day officials' visit with a meeting with Thai Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat at the government house. One memorandum of understanding will be signed by the Board of Investment and China Development Bank Corporations to promote direct investment by both countries. The other concerns the partial payment for a Chinese rail system with Thai farm products. A joint working will be set up to discuss this matter further. Industry Ministry Prasad Bun Chai Suk said yesterday that Ying Lak and Li would witness the BOICDB signing ceremony. Only a few Thai companies have made their presence felt in China, such as Jaren Pokopan Group, Bangkok Bank and Kasagon Bank. However, some Chinese companies have established operations in Thailand. From 2007 to 2012, Chinese investors with 188 projects worth 177.7 billion baht applied for the BOI's tax privileges. The first eight months of this year saw 28 Chinese investment projects worth 18 billion baht applying for incentives. China is now the biggest source of foreign direct investment after Japan. 
and Transport Minister Chat Chat Sitipan said after meeting with the director of China State Railways Administration Liu Dongfu that he would today sign the MOU that would consider allowing Thailand to repay China for part of the construction cost of a high-speed rail project with farm products such as rice and rubber. After MOU is signed, a committee to be shared by Chat Chat will be formed to determine which kind of Thai agricultural products should be used as payment. And the members will include representatives from such agencies such, the, such as the Commerce and Agriculture Ministers. The former Google executive returns to his native Myanmar with bigger plans. Now let's take a look at this uh, report in Myanmar Focus Daily. With the booming of tourism industry in Myanmar and his experience in the United States, a Burmese born Naon decided to return to his home countries and match the opportunities and his expertise together and develop into his own business, always the biggest online travel agent in Myanmar. Myanmar born former Google business operations and strategy manager Naon has an ambitious goal or to make online activities from payment to bookings to e commerce the norm in his home. Neong, a graduate of Stanford University in California and the London School of Economics, has returned to Myanmar with a dream of catching in on three high-growth potential business sectors, which are tourism, online payments, and e-commerce. So it was actually about two years ago. I I, I saw some um, that Myanmar was going to be open. I saw some indication that Myanmar was on a part to be uh, on a site to be reformed. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, at that time, there was no consensus of opinion about which direction Myanmar was going into. Uh, so I wanted to take a position in an industry that I believe has a, 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 a projected to grow. Mm -hmm. So I came back. I wanted to do three things uh, in the uh, uh, new economy, what we call it. So I wanted to uh, start uh, a company in travel area, and I wanted to start a company in payments, and I wanted to take positions in also commerce-related area as well. Mm -hmm. So so initially, in this. Uh, um, New two years, I started a travel company, and then we're in the process of starting an online payment company as well. He achieved his first goal by establishing Oway.com.mm, an online travel agency in Myanmar in 2012, with the aim of helping independent travelers plan their trips and to cash in on the country's booming tourism sector. He is currently the company's CEO. The website offers a wide range of services for both international and local customers, such as hotels, domestic and international flight reservations, car rental, tourism packages, and visa services. It has relationship with 400 hotels and all of Myanmar's domestic allies. Around 5,000 customers, most of them from Europe and America, have used the system. It is the first Myanmar-based travel website to allow international visitors to make secured online payments. Having secured 27th Sea Games official hotel reservation partnership status for Oway Travel Agency, Neon expects the site to grow 200% in terms of traffic in its second year, and growth in Myanmar's tourism is projected at around 30 to 50% this year. In Myanmar, the internet penetration is around 1%, mobile phone penetration about 5%, and the economy is still largely cash-based. The 34-year-old entrepreneur is on his way toward achieving his second goal of launching product that will allow card users of the Myanmar Payment Union, which is made up of 70 local banks, make online and mobile payments but he did not specify what the product is. I think the, we, we believe that the assumption is that these are going to correct itself, you know, in, in within one year. I have no doubt that within one year the internet access is going to be, you know, uh, as fast as any other country. The reason is that, you know, if you are looking at the amount of investment that new telecom carriers are, are, are spending, I think they will be bringing in the latest technology, you know. They, I mean, for example, a few years ago, you know, Thailand just recently had a 3G network, right? And then we're going to, yeah, yeah. So we're going to, uh, 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 the, the, you know, the Talinols and the new carrier, they're going to start it from, you know, uh, from day one, you know, mm -hmm. because it's good re revenue for them. You know, they, they are making a lot of money from the data plans rather than voice plans. So I, I, I have no doubt that, you know, they'll be 
uh, 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 developing the, the latest technology. The second product is likely to be launched before the end of this year. Development of the last item related to e-commerce activity is also underway with the target to come out sometime next year. For the next episode, we will learn more about his experience in starting business in the emerging Myanmar and how he adopted the techniques he learned from working with Google to use in his day-to-day -day work. On the Tang Mi Sang from Myanmar Focus Daily, reporting from Naypyidaw. And that wraps up our Good Morning ASEAN edition for today. And it's also our last broadcast of this program. Thank you so much. It has been a great pleasure reading for you each morning. I'm Mina Jong And I am Nira Chan Have a great weekend. Sawadee